all you have to do is say Dion Sanders' name, and the message board tends to light up. All right, here's why Tennessee should be concerned about Dion Sanders before we get into his latest comments on the collective. There is a bond between Dion Sanders, Colorado's outgoing head coach, and Boo Carter, which is one of Tennessee's, I would say, most significant targets, not only because of his rating, because of the fact that he is in-state as well. You just don't want to lose guys like that. That has a very, very Derek Dooley, Von Bell type of feel if Tennessee were to lose out on Boo Carter out of the Chattanooga area. Um, so there, there's a connection there. Boo is listed as an athlete, but is probably going to play cornerback. So you need to be aware if you're a Tennessee fan or an SEC fan of Deion Sanders. Is Deion Sanders going to roll in and wreck Georgia or Alabama or Florida or Tennessee's recruiting class? No. But could he take one or two guys that affects Tennessee or Georgia or Alabama? Certainly, and he's going to be able to cherry pick some of those guys. I believe that is going to happen. And yes, Boo Carter, the defensive back out of the Chattanooga area, no relation to Boo Ridley. If you notice, I'm not wearing contacts nor glasses. Thanks to Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. They did my LASIK surgery. They can do cataracts as well. And they are local, local, local. They're phenomenal. And they have the local vision centers for your annual checkups but man i got the lasik and i can see far i can see close it is unbelievable absolutely love it so dion a bit hypocritical what's he saying lately i did find one of his comments last week pat narduzzi came out pitts head coach who is so far behind the times and he's uh, essentially said that nil is going to destroy college football which i know some of you on the message board agree with but uh, Dion's response was, I don't know who Pat Narduzzi is, which was pretty funny to me. But Caleb, he's gone a step further. And I know Dion wants to be in the news, so we're not going to cowtail to that all the time. But in this particular case, what did he have to say about collectives? Because Tennessee has one of the best collectives in college football. Yes, yeah, so he said that NIL is not a problem with him, that collectives are. And his quote was, let's talk about NIL name, image, and likeness. What kid out of high school that is notable enough that a CEO of a major company is going to lay it on the line for a kid that ain't nobody know? So it's not NIL. His argument is that collectives are being used to effectively recruit kids who haven't proven anything. And he has a problem with that. My response is, so what? I mean, Deion Sanders is getting paid as a coach, as as a like a D one coach right now. Never proven anything as a D one coach at that level. So again, so what? You like NFL draft picks have guaranteed salaries before they ever proved anything. A lot of them get endorsements. LeBron James got an eighty million dollar shoe deal with Nike before he set foot on the court. Michael Jordan got his deal with Nike before he set foot on the court. So what? I think Dion is realizing that. After going through all the transfer portal stuff, he realizes Colorado has some hesitant NIL collectives, NIL CEO people, and he's going to have trouble recruiting the way he wants to because of that. I think it's the same thing that the PGA Tour just went through with NIL. I don't think they realized how great the money was. When the PGA Tour went out there and tried to fight Saudi money coming in and now as of last week, they combined forces because the money was too great. So I think Deion Sanders went to Colorado and kind of looked at it as, hey, that was a pretty good football program, and he was a player, right? You remember the Buffs back in the day? And when he was at Florida State, they were competing for national titles with Bill McCartney there. And I think he looked at it and he said, kind of the money's all equal, right? Colorado, their collective, if they have one, can bring as much to the table as anybody else. Well, what I think he's learning, and that's not the case. He's used to football in the South, both as an NFL player, a high school player, a college player, and the support from Colorado is not going to be the same as it is at Tennessee or so many other schools as it would have been at Florida State, even though he was not ever really in the running for that job. But the money 
also is not only not there, but it might not be as organized. It, it might take a year or two to get Colorado's potential collected even close to its potential. At that point, Caleb, Deion Sanders could be looking at his next job. So he wants to get this fixed immediately. He would love a collective that would pay high school players. Don't tell me he wouldn't. Yes, it's hypocritical. But the bottom line is he has a glass ceiling at Colorado. That's what Tennessee and so many other schools really don't have because there's more money than there is demand from the high school prospects to get you there. Same thing with the PGA Tour and the Live Tour. The simple fact is there was more money, there was plenty of money to satisfy the needs of all the PGA players if they all wanted to jump. Some didn't for various reasons. There just ain't the type of money at Colorado. They're the PGA Tour while the top programs in the nation, like the Tennessee Alabamas and the Colorado, Tennessee Alabamas and the Georgias, they are essentially the live tour. There's a lot more money there. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's where you're right. He thought his name would also help, you know, kind of making Colorado the glamorous job would make some people want to get involved. But you're right. People, the, the business community in Colorado doesn't care about Colorado football the way the business community in Knoxville cares about Tennessee and football. It's not just an advertising investment for them. It's a lot of them are Tennessee fans. And so they're willing to buy some players to see Tennessee do well. You really don't have that out in Colorado. He did make one point that I think is fair. So when he criticized collectives, he was like, he started saying kids who are doing this, letting collectives recruit them, are, are going to make the wrong decision because they're going to pick the school that's not best for their NFL future, where the real money is. They're going to pick it based on their collective future. But the evidence is there that they're not doing that. Again, Alabama just had the number one class in school history. They don't have a top five collective. Those kids didn't go to Alabama because they were offered more money from Alabama than they were from Texas A&M or Tennessee. They went to Alabama because they were smart enough to know that as an offensive lineman or as a defensive back, I'm going to get coached and prepared for the NFL better under Nick Saban than I will anywhere else. So my chance at generational wealth is best going to play for Nick Saban. I don't think kids are that stupid. I think they're smart enough to know that. Agreed. John Calipari uses the phrase stumbling over nickels and trying to get millions. And he's right. And it's a slight oversimplification, but you have to be at least on the playing field. I don't think Colorado is going to be on the playing field from one to 85. Do I think they could go out and target a kid like Boo Carter and probably get him with some NIL money? Yeah, but Caleb, can they get 25, 30 of those guys like the bigger schools can with better support? Absolutely not. No, not at all. And pre-NIL, again, I think Deion Sanders thought the glamorous brand he brings would help Colorado. The only school I can think of over the last – the only two schools over the last 40 years, Dave, that I think have actually had success – embracing like a glam type of college football brand are USC and Miami. Is there anybody else? Man, not that I, I mean, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, you're kind of talking about a nouveau riche type of team, right? A team yeah. that. You like, you know, know they, Pete Carroll went open, was open about going all Hollywood when he was at USC. Like he had, the, he had Hollywood and that community embrace USC and it worked for recruiting. No, true. I, I I don't know of another team that's – I don't know of another program out there that doesn't have tradition that you could just throw money at it and it's immediately going to be relevant. I mean, I guess there's an amount of money if, if, if Saudis <laughs> wanted to get involved in any particular program, I guess they could change it financially. But I don't see that there's a program out there. And then start there. dismembering people who cover their team negatively. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, there's all kinds of – philosophical and moral reasons not to like what's going on there. I, you have to have some sort of foundational base of tradition, right? I mean, you couldn't just roll in to MTSU with $500 million a year to spend. And people are just, you're just going to win over guys. Who do you? you have to have one, you have to have one of two things. You have to have a foundational base of tradition or you have to have really untapped potential. Like, again, remember, when Howard Schellenberger took over Miami in 1979 or wherever, what he realized was this is a 
this was a laughing stock football program, a private school in Coral Gables. What could they bring to the table? And he's like, oh, there's still a lot of South Florida talent, and I'll just build a fence around South Florida, and I'll win a national championship doing that. That's how Miami grew without any tradition whatsoever in the past. I think there are well, schools. You no, know, I was going to say, and LSU was the same. They were a sleeping giant throughout the 80s and the 90s. And then yes. Nick Saban went there. Florida was the same. They were a sleeping giant in the 80s. And Steve Spurrier went there. So you either have to, I see what you're saying. You have to have the talent or you have to have the tradition base. Right. Or you have to have such a level of glam that's untapped that, which Colorado doesn't have. To give you an example, I've been seeing this for a long time. I don't know why the Big 12 or Power 5 Conference doesn't target UNLV. Vegas is where everything is going for sports right now. And I'm telling you, UNLV is going to be the coolest school to be a part of in 10 years. And they already got basketball national titles, a couple in the 90s. So, I mean, with the way sports – and by the way, sports gambling is more exciting for college football than any other sport. By far, sports gambling is best with college football. UNLV is where it's at. Somebody listen to me. SEC, go out there and get them. Vegas is going to be awesome for college football. <laughs> so Dion's best case scenario is either make noise. Okay, three levels. Fail miserably, make noise, or win championships. Yeah, his best case scenario is make noise. His Barris you know, is... He can win a champion. He can win a Pac-12 championship. Oh, you're right. Now with USC and UCLA out of the Pac-12, you're right, but they're going to the Big 12 soon. Do you think Colorado could outdo TCU? I think TCU is a better program to be a part of than Colorado, honestly. See, to me, that's where it gets dicey because Colorado would have to, they'd have to win out eight to 10 guys based off NIL money a year, not three or four. And I think right. they're going to be in the three or four range. But if they can get yeah. to eight to 10, then, then if you cut the, I always use the old ratio with the recruiting, cut it in half. If you have, if you have, five five stars probably two and a half are going to be good so then if you get five really impact players a year at colorado you're doing something there <laughs>